um, the President of the United States, Governor of Utah, County Health Department, Mayor of Salt Lake County, Mayor of Salt Lake City, and the World Health Organization have all declared that the global pandemic uh, continues to exist and with its new strain and it's easily transmitted, has spread globally, so there is a state of emergency. So that's the reason there's not an anchor location, but IDC makes sure that notice to the public contains information regarding how any member of the public can participate in the electronic meeting, which this is. And so we just keep reading that while we keep having to make this accommodation. I think you could address the minutes too, just not a final vote. Okay, sounds good. So um, actually, who is it who uh, writes up these minutes? I think they're really well done every time. It's Katrina, my staff member. She is awesome at it. Yeah, she really is. These are, she does a good, good job. And I like the format where it makes it easy to find things. So um, take a look at the minutes if you haven't already. They were all the paperwork was attached to their uh, calendar invite and I've looked over them myself, but if whoever else has been able to read them and uh, I'll take a motion if they look like they are accurate or anyone who sees us something that needs to be fixed, please tell us. I reviewed them and they looked accurate to me. So when we're ready for a motion, I'd be happy to make it. You can make it because with Heather Schreiber joining us, we are out oh, of here. So. <laughs> I moved to, uh, to uh, accept the minutes from our last uh, IDC meeting. Great, and I see Sean Milne has seconded the motion. Is there anyone who objects? Otherwise, we'll assume you are approving minutes. Right, looks like we are unanimous to approve these minutes. Thank you. So we'll get started then. We have Commissioners Milne and Lindsay and Luce, welcome Ryan, and Commissioner Shriver. Is it Shriver or Shriver? It's Shriver. There we go. That's the German background that I have. Zimmerman or Zimmerman, Commissioner, and let's see. Rich Morrow, Commissioner, thank you. And Commissioner Vickery. And I believe uh, Representative Ferry is also a Commissioner, is that true? Yes, okay, wonderful. And he's listening and driving. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you to all the commissioners, but we do have several people here from Duchesne County. So maybe um, it's good if you get to introduce yourselves. Um, how about Commissioner Miles? Commissioner Greg Miles, Duchesne County Commissioner. Commissioner Hansen. Hey there, Commissioner Hansen, Duchesne County Commission. Wonderful. And let's see, is he still there? Yeah, you are. Commissioner Todd. Commissioner Todd, Greg Todd here, Commission Chair. Thank Very you. good. And then we have Grant Charles. Would you like to say who you are? Grant Charles at the Duchesne County Attorney's Office. Thank you very much. Also, let's see, where did where did they go? Lance Dean, I know I saw you. I'm right here. Hi, thanks. There you are. Yes, thank you. And tell us who you are, Lance. I'm the Uinta County um, Defending Manager. Yes, thank you. Okay, is there anyone that I have missed? I know we have staff, maybe making sure that we introduce staff. We have Adam Troop with IDC. Thank you, Adam. And let's see. Oh, I missed you, Shalise. Shalise uh, Jessen, all <coughs> from Duchesne. Go ahead and share who you are. Shalise Jessen, Duchesne County Commission Assistant. Yes, thank you so much. All right, and then other staff, we have Katrina. Hello, I'm here. Very good. And Leslie. And Leslie. Sorry, I'm on the phone, I'm here. <laughs> yes, Leslie Howitt from IDC staff. And then our esteemed, uh, oh, Greg. Hi, everyone. Also from IDC staff. Did I get all of our IDC staff recognized? I think I did, okay. 
And so uh, Joanna Landau is the director of the Utah Indigent Defense Commission. Tons of work and leadership there. We're super grateful for her. Um, we've approved minutes. So Joanna, go ahead and take us to our next agenda item, talking about the Duchesne County Grant. Nope, oh, next agenda item is actually just a quick update on CCJJ, but then we'll move quickly to Duchesne. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so you all know that we are in CCJJ, the Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice. That's where we were housed from the get-go. Um, we lost our executive director, Kim Cordova, who is a statutory designee to our commission. Um, she's a friend and really sad to see her go. We had a great collaborative working relationship. She's gonna be great, she'll do great. And we're, what I'm happy to hear is that Kim leaving doesn't seem to signal that Governor Cox is not committed to criminal justice reform. It seems that he just wants it to happen under a different face, and but to continue the progress that the state has made over the past five, six years. Um, <clears throat> so Tom Ross, the Bountiful City Police Chief has been nominated, although not Senate confirmed yet, to replace Kim as the Executive Director of CCJJ. Um, and from what I understand, he has a pretty enormous and challenging job ahead of him to be the face of criminal justice reform from a law enforcement perspective, but to stand behind it. And I very much remember what it's like to have a very challenging job that you're walking into. Um, and I had really great support from Ron Gordon in the beginning and Kim then. And so I want to really be a great partner to him um, and to help him understand what we do and to help him you know, see the whole perspective of criminal justice because I think that's what he's committed to. Adam and I are meeting with him tomorrow. Um, he hasn't officially started. Um, the, and yeah, so just wanted to address that. Are there any, any questions, any other thoughts about that transition from any of you all? Joanna, I was just gonna say, I know Chief Ross fairly well. He's been great to work with. Um, he's a very reasonable, pretty good guy to work with. I think you'll like him. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I have no reason to believe otherwise. And he's been very active in our system here in Davis County. We know him uh, quite well. In fact, he for years worked toward the concept of the receiving center that we have, which has been a huge thing. And yeah. um, Commissioner Zimmerman, were you gonna say something? Uh, he's retired, isn't he? He's not the current police chief, isn't that right? Actually, he is the current police chief. Oh, he yeah. is. So they're wow. gonna have to make a change. Yes, they're in down the to process them. of retiring. Yeah, you're right. He was getting close to retirement. You are right. So yeah, big he's, switch here. He's been the um, uh, Police Chiefs Association president for four or five years too. Yes, so definitely a leader in, in that law enforcement leadership. <laughs> yeah. So the only final thing I want to say about this is it, it has driven home the message and the need to ensure that we have independence. One of our core principles, as you know, is to make sure that indigent defense is independent of the prosecution and independent of the judiciary. So Senator Weiler and the governor's office have um, are working on a bill to just make me an executive director within CCJJ that is appointed and terminated by you all. So you all with some expertise over indigent defense and way too much time with me when <laughs> I can decide when to hire and fire me or fire me and then who to hire next. Um, and that's just in the statute. So just, it that wasn't unclear before Tom Ross's appointment, but it has become more clear. And there's some, from what I understand, there's no objections to that. It's really a technical point that really probably should have been there all from the very beginning. So you did hire me way back when, and now you will have statutory authority to terminate me. Because if you remember, there has actually been an open debate about who can fire me in legislative sessions. <laughs> so I, once I and for all. Say, some we, of us older older members have always thought that was the case and wondered who came up with the other way of doing things. Yeah, I mean, we've tried it a couple different models. We've switched that statute around a bit, but I think this will be this is sort of the final resting place. I've been asked a couple times recently, why aren't we are we are in an independent agency entirely? And there are models for that. Colorado has an independent 
a public defender who's in the governor's cabinet. Idaho does that as well with their appellate division. But the take that I'm getting is that we would definitely lose the proximity to the governor and the governor's budget that we have with CCJJ. And so right now, and until we really get you know, an idea of where we're going with indigent defense for the long haul, I don't think that's the right place to be. So I'm fine with this solution. I trust you all to tell me if I'm doing things right or wrong. Ryan has never held back on that fact. <laughs> and yeah, so. I have never it. said you do things wrong. <laughs> I've always assumed we could fire you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Perfect. Uh, in truth, you could, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't take much as we've seen in recent days. So I am here for the firing should you see the need. Um, I'm happy to move to the next agenda item. <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually a really important update. So thank you for making sure we covered it. All right, so now to the Duchesne County grant. Yeah, do you want me to start it off? That, yeah, I, well, I guess I can preface a tiny bit that um, we had a virtual meeting with a, with a big group of um, Duchesne and Uinta and Lance Dean and an administrative staff. It was a, it was a good meeting and it, it shed light on the opportunity for a meeting that we just had yesterday just with Duchesne and that is, um, representative by how all three commissioners are here, as well as um, their commission, I don't know, are you office manager, Shalise? Uh, you, I know you said it. Commission assistant. Commission assistant, yes. And um, Grant Charles as well from Duchesne. Um, just a really good conversation with the commissioners yesterday, and me, and Joanna, and also Adam Troop. So, um, was helpful. I know that um, both of those meetings just helped, uh, will be helpful to our commission. So jo Joanna is going to share more with all of us. Yeah, I was really grateful for that first meeting and then incredibly grateful to Commissioner Kamalu. She um, is a master convener. She <laughs> is the perfect person to be our IDC chair because her ability to bring diverse people and voices to the table and it's not kill them with kindness, but it is. Um, it, it, disarm them. <laughs> disarm them, yes. Make them happy to be there is astounding and, and really an asset for what we do. Not that anyone needed any killing with kindness, but this is your MO. It just works really well, Commissioner Kamalu. So I want to make sure you get recognition for being the convener of that meeting yesterday because it was so valuable. And Commissioner Hansen and Todd and Miles, thanks for being there. Also, I thought we had a great discussion. Um, the discussion surrounds the Duchesne County grants that we, that you all approved whenever we were approved the first round of FY 20 grants and then we had to amend them and then we had to amend them back. That grant is still open and hasn't fully been signed. There have been some issues in the grant that haven't, we haven't been able to work through to everyone's satisfaction. We value Duchesne a lot as a partner. They were a really early player in with us and an early partner. They worked through Uinta and the 8th District grant. It was one of our early grants, so we didn't do it perfectly. And we left some things open that have continued to sort of cause some questions and issues. So the what we kind of, well, what we agreed to was to make a few changes to the grant that we wanted to let you all know about so that we can keep working forward. Um, they're somewhat of compromises from what we wanted to initially achieve, but they're not setbacks. They're things that will allow us to really move forward with Duchesne. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Duchesne County Commissioners, you all have committed to continuing to have discussions with us about the long-term place for indigent defense, especially in, in Duchesne and in counties of the third through sixth class, which really, are so small and don't necessarily know exactly how to run indigent defense and you know what our continuing relationship and role is to help them really improve and protect themselves on the with their Sixth Amendment responsibilities. So we are changing the project director to have it be Shalise, who works under the commission. Um, we hope to work very closely with Shalise. My staff, Greg and Katrina, will help her with a lot of the grant requirements and defender data and to really help 
help her fully understand those responsibilities. Um, one of the other issues was these uh, four or five conflict defenders, and we had asked that they be under contract. On those, on the five defendant murder cases, and the judge has issued an order that conflicts with necessarily having them under conflict. So we were intervening in a way that we couldn't really intervene. We couldn't really compel Duchesne to get them under contract when Judge Chiara's order is out there telling Duchesne to pay them. So I think Duchesne has some work to do that we'd like to be really helpful with in getting a, an agreement going with those defenders so that they have you know, it reduced in writing, but we're not making that a grant requirement because it, it just really was not our place. And then because we're moving Duchesne to be a little more independent of Uinta, taking out the requirement that they have an MOU with um, Uinta County to have Lance manage indigent defense. And I think um, we'll work going forward to really help make sure this isn't a setback and make sure we keep progressing. So I'm committed to continuing this relationship and to working forward. And I hope that Duchesne is also in Lance and we went to in the whole eighth district. I think we have lots of things to talk about. Is there anything I haven't fairly represented, Duchesne or Lance? Anything else anyone wants to say? Okay, crickets. And, and the <laughs> only thing I, I mean, you're getting nods and yeah, agreement with that you covered it nicely. And, and in addition, I would just add that um, the knowledge and understanding is one thing, but the resources is another giant giant thing, right? And Commissioner Hansen's nodding her head. It's challenging, so. Madam Chair, I think for a moment, uh, Commissioner Greg Todd had unmuted as if he might say something. Oh, Commissioner Todd. Well, I was just, again, going to agree with what has been said. We've had a great meeting. Uh, I think we're, we want to move forward and do the very best we can and participate and be a part of the IDC, and um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, well said, thank you. That is definitely the sense that we got from the meeting. So I can't remember if we decided that we needed a vote on this. I think we do need a vote to um, amend the grant award so that we can get it signed with new terms. I don't think it needs to be necessarily specific or maybe it does, but I'll, I'll follow your lead on that Commissioner Kamalu, but I do think we need a vote from the commission. That sounds great. Um, let's see if we have a commissioner who could uh, form a motion. Make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the changes in accordance with the agreement yesterday. Okay. Second. Commissioner Mill has a second. All right. So uh, I'm just trying to decide whether we need a roll call vote or maybe just, is there anyone who is not in favor of this motion? Please speak up. Okay, seeing none, we'll consider unanimous from the commissioners who are here. Very good. Thanks again, everyone from Duchesne and Uinta for attending. We really appreciate having you at the table. We look forward to continuing to work with you all. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I guess they can continue to watch and learn from the rest of the meeting, or if you have other things to go and do, feel free. And let's just say, uh, Shalice, oh, she may have just barely dropped off, but anyway, she's the assistant and she, you're getting a master's in criminal justice, sounds like pretty soon here, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's the word on the street. So good for you. Best wishes with that. All right. We'll now go to um, the agenda item for the grant program redesign. And oh, no, sorry. That's on the minutes. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Yeah, if that's where I went wrong. I was looking at the minutes as if it were the agenda. <laughs> okay. So now number five is the non-lapsing grant request discussion and votes. Joanna, is, is that you as well? I'll let Adam and Greg take that one. All right. And welcome to Commissioner Wally. Bugden, Bugden, right? Bugden. Bugden. 
not so German. All right, very good. Uh, Adam, are you the one? I am, thank you, one moment. I had muted myself. Uh, thanks, we're gonna uh, move through this. Greg's got a few slides and what we wanna do is just talk about what the process is that staff has gone through to review and then make recommendations on um, with regard to the non-lapsing funds, the additional appropriate, I'm sorry, the additional grant requests, grant funding requests. So just to recap quickly, remember that um, we, obviously we exist, but uh, the reason we're talking about this is we have the possibility to receive non-lapsing funds. There's been quite a bit of money that's built up over the last few years that we have not been able to spend. Um, this comes both from funding that we had not spent in prior years and then uh, de-obligated funds from past grants that either weren't fully spent or that we could not originally um, allocate. So we've got a, a million dollars, approximately a million five available in non-lapsing funds. We have been told by the prior governor that we will have access to those and that we can spend them. However, the current governor has to produce his budget, put it out, and then also give us the information that those funds have been released. If they're not released, they can be pulled back into for spending elsewhere or they would end up sitting in our accounts. Uh, the, the trick or the limitation is that these funds can only be spent from the time they're available. Well, I'm sorry, I should say from January through June. So they cannot extend, we cannot extend spending at all into the next fiscal year, next state fiscal year. So we received um, over $1 million in requests. Uh, this is identified as one-time funding for us because we can't continue into next year. So we're, we've told applicants that, and that's the way we're handling it. You can see we got 1.6 or 1 million, 6, uh, $1,006,000 in requests. Greg totaled that up and made some changes. And so what we're, our adjusted total of requested funds is, is 663,326. The reason for that is that there were some requests that were asking for funding that went beyond June, so into the next fiscal year, and they were hoping to get that funded up front or, or approved so they could continue it. That's not possible. And there were um, a request for sort of retroactive funding. It would still be paid for within this fiscal year, but going back beyond January to the beginning of the fiscal year. And we designed this program and this, this reimbursement to account for the, the money we anticipated in January. And that's how we've set it up. We told the potential ap applicants, look, you can request money that you can spend between January and June for anything that you um, have not already been uh, granted awards for. So you can have supplements, but they can only go forward in time. So the next slide is good, Greg. What we have is 663 approximately in requests. So uh, reiterating, reiterating that the project period we identified was gave notice of funding for six months. <laughs> uh, some requests came in for covering 12 months. And so the question really is for this group, um, does the commission support the idea that we will limit those, um, the, the grant awards just to spending for that period of time and not to retroactively fund something that may have been cut or that may have been underfunded elsewhere. And I'm gonna go through these questions if that's all right, Commissioner Kamala, and um, ask for discussion after we get through the forum. That'll really oh, be great. Uh, second part is uh, uh, probably a little bit simple. The five grantees requested funding for law clerks. Uh, some wanted to pay substantially more for those clerks or anticipated uh, a lot more time commitment for them. So what we did was to propose to pull back I, for all of those entities that are requesting law clerks, a set amount of uh, funding as a maximum and an hourly rate that would be a maximum instead of giving uh, you know, $20,000 one place and 1,900 elsewhere. So should we have a consistent award for each of the grantees uh, who requested law clerks? We also had requests for defense resources, which is obviously something that had been in place fiscal year 2020 and that we are now being asked to replace. Uh, so there are $187,000 requested and then $22,400 requested for mileage and travel. These are reimbursements, remember, so we're not giving the direct payment to the county to spend entirely, but they request reimbursement. 
Um, and the question is, are we comfortable with fully, fill, uh, fully funding these requests, at least using that as a maximum, considering we did not fund those when we made our cuts for 2021? Finally, that we received um, some requests for additional or new positions. And we've been clear again that we can't fund past June 2021. Uh, so there is a risk that any new position would not be funded by grant funding. And the counties have to be aware that if that's the case, they need to be able to either terminate that position or carry the rest of the cost themselves. Uh, obviously, they can apply for grant funding, but none of that is guaranteed for 2022. So um, do we want to fund those with recognition of the risk and make that very clear for the counties and the um, grantees who have asked for it? The last part is, will we accept an application, a new application from Wasatch County, uh, which came about because they were going through a, a procurement process for attorneys for their contracts. And they asked to be part of what we are carrying forward. They'd like to partner with Utah County on management and uh, they submitted an appropriate request. Those are the questions, Commissioner. Uh, they're in fact, I guess, five, uh, but a couple of them are relatively straightforward. I just would like to ask if there's any questions or anyone else wants to make comments on it and then um, we can go forward. Uh, we had some suggested motions after discussion if you wanna consider those two. Very good, thank you, Adam. So we'll open it up for discussion from all of the commissioners. What, what questions do you have or, or feedback do you have about this? Um, I, have a, I have a question, um, Madam Chairman. The uh, um, adding, adding new lawyers with six month funding, um, it seems, I raise the question, if we do that um, and then we, that, that pretty much binds us, I think, going forward. It's not likely we're going to give money for new hires or support new hires and pull it back later. So do we, what's the equity what are the equities in this among the existing clients, if you will, the existing customers that we have and how have we tended to treat, you know, some, some of the stuff like there's equipment requests, well, those are one-time costs, but these are ongoing and the local government is, is gonna essentially say, we can't afford it without you. And if we put them on, we're gonna have face a lot of pressure to keep them on. So that's just a question I raise. That's a good question. Yeah, any any insight for us, Adam, with that question? Can I say something, Adam? Oh, of course. Yeah, I think it's a really good question, Michael. Um, and, you know, we want to keep expanding and Wasatch County reached out and this was the way, the only way we could figure out with Wasatch to work with them this year was because they are just entering into their calendar year um, budget, and this was they were about to enter into new contracts with attorneys or this, and so we really wanted to encourage them to to apply to see. And we made very clear to Wasatch County, for example, that you know there is no guarantee whatsoever that moving forward this will continue because we can't, as Brian frequently reminds us. Um, I have. Very I have good reason to be very optimistic about our request to the governor's budget, um, and I hope that the legislature is also supportive, as they have been. Um, but that being said, that doesn't mean that these will continue. So I think it is just the question that the IDC has to deal with. We have made it very clear that there, there is no guarantee that these will continue. For some of these grant requests, like the San Pete County grant request, there's a request for a short-term contract provider to help out because their caseloads are going crazy under WebEx and they're just, it's taking that much more time to get stuff done. And so they really need the help. They have a big murder trial coming up and they need someone to take the WebEx hearings on the other one. So um, it, it's, it's a delicate push and pull, but I think, I mean, Adam, correct me if we 
I'm wrong. Hey, Mouse, if you want to go back in there, you're fine. Oops, Wally, you're not muted. Oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> Wally is never muted in life. You know that. <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong. We've talked to everyone, Adam, about their requests and made that clear. I know Greg, you and Greg have done a lot of outreach, right? We have, and I think specifically to most important, probably to the point about new positions that we feel obligated to continue funding. Yeah, we, John is right. We've been very clear about that. I think that's appropriate. We, you know, we, we all know we had, we tried to protect positions and contract positions last year when we did our cuts. Uh, we would, I'm sure, continue to try to do that, but this is even more problematic if we've got a six month term for it. Where we have been clear and um, we'll carry that forward. Great. Thank you for the question and thank you for the information. Chair, may I ask a question? Oh, yes, Ryan. Do, do, do these grants, proposed grants, do they follow the new model that we kind of decided on last time of going down the path of more funding management and and that side of things and the individual lawyers and, and, and people on that level. Cause I, I thought that was a shift we were making for many reasons to avoid this problem that we just talked about and to get better overall cohesive indigent defense. It, yes, that is the, the structure we plan to follow, but I would say these requests don't really tailor too closely to that. They don't fit too closely to that. What, a lot of uh, the applicants are asking for really is replacement of something that was cut or some, um, and you've got all materials if you want to go through the detail, but they're asking for some supplement and some recovery of what was lost. So defense resources, uh, mileage, we cut those. So they don't really fit, but we are carrying, we, I, we as staff have treated this as a supplement to what was done in fis for fiscal year, you know, what was done last year for fiscal year 2021. So your question is absolutely on target. We want to get toward, down that road more, but this is this is a sort of backfill approach to things. And because because we can at this point. And and I think I'd be okay with that. I just want to know if our expectation and the grant process for next year will be that we're walking away from funding like this toward where we we all discussed last time. And if the applicants know that, if they know we're helping backfilling, this was based on last year's application period, we get it. But going forward, it's changing and the rules change and they have to follow the new rules. I mean, we saw that this time. If, if we say we're gonna do A, we're gonna do A, even if there is political pressure or other pressures. I just wanna make sure that's clear. Yeah, absolutely. And I think ongoing communication with grantees and applicants is very important on that. But, uh, Can I make a comment about that? Please. Yes. I would say that they're not, they don't go against that, Ryan, generally, because with Wasatch, we're bringing them into a managing defender system. And with San Pete, uh, Millard, and Juab and Nephi, they are already in and we are supplementing that. So they're not antithetical, mostly. Um, I think, you know, there are some questions about some of the requests and that's what Greg and Adam have really worked to narrow. There's one that I think, I don't know that we've addressed yet that we might want to specifically talk about, which is that request from Washington County for the juvenile appellate contract, Adam. Do you have any update on that? I do not. Now, Nicole and I have been trying to talk for, for three days about, um, and just haven't been able to communicate. We have a plan for this afternoon, but the, I do know what they have been working on and what their what the gap is, um, and I do want to be clear they they have to understand that that's only funding for a six month period starting in January, and they'll have to keep, pick up the cost after that, uh, which is what we already said. But they have ongoing cases that I know they're they're looking at. This may be um, this is maybe funding for additional contracts, or it may be just dealing with what they have now. In any case, it's for uh, services paid for in January through June. May I, may I ask a question, uh, yes. Adam, on that juvenile? Is that juvenile, is that designed to encompass both delinquency and child welfare, do you know? And is that just, if it's just child welfare, is that just for cases 
right now that are set for brief would be set for briefing or do we have any idea no that's what i am trying to find out because really before we grant that we have to know a couple of things from them about whether they are willing to say yeah okay we understand this is only january through june we need to understand what the real purpose is for the juvenile appellate contract and if it's child welfare and delinquency both then we need to figure out who they're going to hire whether they're hiring one or two i just don't know what the real terms of the contract are so before we give any final answer we'll uh, we'll certainly have that information pulled together okay i have a i have a oh sorry I also write that this money can only be used during this six month period. It's one time, use it or lose it. We've got six months to, to uh, do with it what the best that we can do. Okay. I have one other question if I might. Um, I notice there's a big hardware request from Washington County and there's a couple other hardware requests um, and they're just, you know, straight out for laptops. And I'm trying to remember what our approach has been in the past for hardware when it isn't necessarily, say, something that will support the defender system when the municipality doesn't have that. I remember we did something like that with Ogden. Um, so what is our view... I mean, hypothetically, if this is one-time money and we can't spend it all, I can understand <clears throat> picking some one-time expenses, but the question is picking up hardware costs for a county as opposed to um, picking up stuff that more integrates them into our long-term objectives. I so I'll just comment quickly and Greg may want to speak to that too, but I, I think that's a really good question, but I do believe you hit on one of the key points and that is we have money that's been um, accrued over the past several years. We don't have um, any time more than six months to use it. Let's use it for something that our current partners are asking for. And I'm assuming in past, if we were careful about that, it was to be very careful with not overspending and, um, and identifying top priorities. Right now we've got partners who are working with us and we are looking to how to how do we support them. The request really, Michael, came in terms of, look, we have these changes because of COVID and the way hearings are being handled. We could use some help with, with hardware. Um, I understand your point. I also think it's reasonable in these all those circumstances to say, we won't set a precedent for these kinds of products in future, but right now they're sort of addressing immediate problems. Thank you. Thank you. So Adam, I, I have a question. Uh, first, a, a comment. I, I think it very much is, the hardware very much is a COVID-based um, requirement. I mean, I think the matrix, I, I think the whole way that law is practiced now is very different and does require the use of uh, laptops and other sorts of things like that that make it much easier for us to do our job. Um, but I do have a question. Have you had any discussions with Wasatch and or Washington about their uh, ability to retain somebody or hire somebody without a promise of a more than six month period of time? Because I think that is an important component for us to, to think about when, when they're saying, look, I can only guarantee you six months and whether or not that may impact their, number one, their ability to hire somebody. And number two, whether or not they can have a commitment or make a commitment to somebody for more than six months. Joanna, do you want to speak to that? I know you've, we both had contact with Wasatch, but you may have had more, or I don't know, Margaret's talked to them too at times, I believe. Yeah, the position would be in Margaret's office and say in what we've done to get around the law clerks is to say, you know, they would be $15 an hour for 20 hours a month through July, right? Or through June short-term contracts like that, or um, there's a question of whether maybe I hire them and then people use them through us. We're trying to work that out. But with the positions, I think that, Rich, you're exactly right. It's a very real question. And I, my two questions about that are, can they actually hire someone and use this money? And then where do we go from there? So Margaret, 
I don't know if you've thought about how you might contract with this person or otherwise um, get them on board for this short amount of time. You know, I haven't had that direct discussion, although I probably should have more recently, but I believe that I'm sure that discussion is being held. I think, especially on the administrative assistance slot, mm -hmm. um, the issue is, is that we've, with Sam Pete, Nephi, Juab, Millard, and that, and now adding, if you add Wasatch, that's simply more work than one administrative assistant can do. Um, and so I know that would be uh, to uh, account for uh, the increase in the administrative time uh, that Wasatch uh, and accounting the size of Wasatch would bring. Now, whether or not they you know uh, they figured out whether it would be you know you know how many hours a week, I don't know for sure. But I know those discussions are being held or have been held, and I'm fairly confident that that was kind of uh, I, at least I would hope it would it's been held. I'm not, ex and I, I'm assuming the conflicts contract is to uh, help with the, the district court side of things. Although they, the way they do things right now in Wasatch is they have some blended contracts between the juvenile and, and criminal as I understanding it. And it, I think that's just to provide for some additional um, coverage to bring the caseloads down and, and to begin the specialization Okay. And Rich, the my recollection is that the um, Washington County request for uh, appellate support is really a contract as opposed to employee, and it's a low level of contract. The issue we will raise with them and have had concern about is, uh, are you going to be paying for the appeals that, that last longer than six months, which obviously they will, or frequently they will. So. Uh, we'll deal with that with them, but there's not an there's not an employee, and if they enter a contract, they can choose to do it for six or twelve months. But them. Yeah. No, that that uh, makes more that sense. makes more sense. Yeah, good explanation. Are there any other questions or feedback from commissioners? Can I say one last thing? Yeah, I think. We know this isn't absolutely perfect, um, but we know there's a need out there. And so we're trying to figure out how to meet that. And this is sort of a pilot project to see if this works. We also, if we don't use this, have this money that I, I don't need any more paper or desks or computers <laughs> or travel, right? There's not <laughs> other things to spend it on. And that's that strikes me as counterproductive when we know there's a need out there. So I think, you know, this is a bit of a trust fall to see if we can make this work. We don't know if it will, and they know the terms, and we'll make it, we'll put it in the contracts and be extremely explicit about that. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of an evolution. That's all. Better than wasting the money, I guess. Yeah. Right. No, it's nice to have some where we had so much taken away before. Mr. Kamalu, can I just, and maybe it's time to put a pin in this for right now, but I'm, I'm just thinking about what our grant requests are going to be looking like. And I realize that we've readjusted our priorities and our prism, but I am wondering with the backlog in cases that all jurisdictions are facing right now, whether or not there's going to be an appetite from our grantees for this type of assistance, getting that, that backlog out of the system after the courts reopen. I just, that just keeps bothering me in the back of my head. So I just thought I'd mention it. No, that's a good, that's a good question. Do you have any thoughts on that, um, staff? Staff always has thoughts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's a really good question. And I don't know exactly how to, I know there's other, there were other grantees that needed this also and they didn't apply. And I think it's partly because they were so busy, right? And they're, they're I, I don't know how to meet that any better except to continue getting the word out that it's available. And, um, you know, in these systems that have managing defenders and that have organization to ask for it, then it makes total sense, right? Um, 
Yeah, right. But when we have new grantees coming in, like Wasatch, it's a little harder because we can't just add on. We can't kind of hold them on and then add supplement. We have to, we're trying to figure out how to bring them in. So I don't, I don't know how to do it. I would love to hear anyone who has more grant experience brainstorms about it. And I'll add this. I agree with Joanna completely. It's hard to do what might be very helpful or probably would be very helpful as we go forward, assuming we're talking about applications for the coming year since court won't exactly open up before, uh, for a few months anyway, I would guess. What is it that systems need? What do they need to adjust to this, to these changes and to dealing with the backlog? Uh, Rich's point is good. There's obviously different practice requirements and a lot more need for laptops. What else would be helpful? Um, how do we, how can we support that and how do we get systems to really show what their need is so we can decide whether to help? I'd love to have some discussion about that from pr practitioners who were there to see those problems and we'll know what they are. Adam, is there, is, is there any chance that we could be, we could be proactive and somehow be soliciting um, interest for, I mean, if Rich is right, that we're probably in for a long term shift in the way a lot of this is being done and you're gonna have more demand for hardware in order to facilitate, particularly for smaller counties, smaller municipalities. Is there some way we could be more aggressive to get rid of this money? I mean, we're only spending 600,000 out of a million six. Um, there's a lot of money going to waste waste i mean it won't it's not be. going it's not going to waste it, we're not losing it michael we we it's we still hold it and we can you do this again next year also um sorry i'm gonna i didn't ask to answer his question i just interrupted sorry commissioner kamalu oh please <laughs> um but no michael problem. i think it's a good question but the problem i think that is always going to exist until we change the statute is that we have to work through local governments and their budgets don't deal with inter-calendar mm -hmm. ballooning, right? So with these, we made sure that they communicated with the local but uh, local entity to say, remember, we reimburse. So you're gonna be upfronting this 100,000 or whatever you're asking for, and we will reimburse it, but you have to cover it. And Sean and Commissioner Kamalu, I know you know what that looks like to your budget. And so until we can directly respond to defenders and fund them directly, which I don't know, maybe we should, see if the statute should be changed in that effect so that we could do limited smaller grants directly to defenders right for computers and resources that they needed i don't know but i think right now that's our biggest obstacle in getting it quickly out the door yeah and i don't did i see greg uh were you trying to say something greg Bates? yeah commissioner kamala if i could just add to that a little bit <clears throat> um with our new grant process, uh, we will be sending out uh, email blasts and contacting our grantees and other counties that we've been working with. Um, and how that new process is going to work, there will be an evaluation completed this month, and then we'll be setting up meetings with each of these prospective grantees uh, in February and March to um, evaluate their systems and identify uh, the needs of those systems. And so I think that um, to uh, Justice Zimmerman's point, we could be very um, strategic in those uh, talks about identifying some one-time costs that we could uh, look at potentially funding as well, um, because that would still give us time to get that done prior to June 30th if they're, if they're one-time equipment type costs. Great. Yeah, that's you. a good point, Greg. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for adding that. Okay, other oh, questions? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. One more point, Commissioner, and that was the last slide, which is what um, we'd like to put forth as, um, sorry, I just got distracted, as motions for you to consider. We, you've been great in just supporting staff in the past to um, allow us the authority to go forward, but to clarify this, we just had a couple of suggestions. Greg, if you go to the next slide and we have those in front of us. I think we may have just lost our quorum. 
Can we? If that's the case, we can go forward without actual motions, Commissioner, but just wanted approval for the concept. So whatever works uh, based on the quorum is good for us. Okay. And so we don't have a, um, a quorum anymore, Joanna? Oh, no. Sorry, I, I was not counting Wally. It, we are just to date. All right. Very good. Fast. <laughs> and they have, uh, if there aren't any further questions or feedback from commissioners for our staff, then maybe look at that, what they've shared as a possible motion. And if there's someone who is comfortable to make that motion, then I would accept that. Join the meeting. Mrs. Chair, I'd make a motion akin to that on the screen to um, move forward with an amendment that benefits a, a grant consistent with the direction provided by the commission for Wasatch County. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Mill and a second by Commissioner Lindsay. Any further discussion? Just who's on the phone now ending in 2480 so we know whether to count you as a voting member. Joanna, it's Heather Schriever. Okay, thank you, Heather. Very good. All right. So uh, are there any commissioners who um, are not in favor of the motion? Okay, hearing none, looks like we are unanimous to pass that motion. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you. So that takes care of number five and we'll move to number six, the Utah Public Defense Day 2021. And Katrina, are you the one who is going to present this? Yes, let me just share that language with you. Um, Do you wanna introduce it first, Katrina, and give them, remind them? <laughs> yes. So last year we had a declaration by Governor Herbert for the Utah Indigent Defense Day on March 3rd. And on that day, we also had a reception at the Capitol with the support of um, Representative Ferry and um, Senator Weiler. And we had a small reception, but um, well, received by the people who came and uh, we really appreciate their support and um, participation in that reception. This year we would like to get a new declaration, um, at least in the past the governor's office requires that declarations are applied for every year. So this is the proposed language that we would like to present to the governor's office for consideration and uh, we are changing it to Public Defense Day rather than Indigent Defense Day. Um, March 18th is the National Gideon Day or Public Defense Day. So this year, because we are not able to have a reception during the legislative session at the Capitol due to COVID, uh, we thought it would just make sense to go with the national date of March 18th for the declaration this year. And um, so we will just, Wanted to make you aware of this. Um, Join the meeting request and um, see if you would have any ideas of how we can celebrate this year since we are not able to have a reception at the Capitol. And um, the governor's office has the editorial rights, so they will, if they approve this, they have the right to change the language to whatever they want it to be, but this would be the one that we would present to them. Very good. Yeah, that's some helpful background. I didn't know about that one last year. Um, Can I say one thing about that? Yeah. Katrina did an amazing job organizing it last year and Representative Ferry spoke. Um, Senator Weiler got some senators there. Uh, Senator H Henderson was there. Um, and if you remember, it was our very last in-person meeting <laughs> before the world ended. We even we even knew there was something. I remember elbow bumping Zimmerman because we knew we shouldn't be handshaking. <laughs> that was all we knew before the world crumbled. So it was a momentous final <laughs> celebration. I'm bummed we can't do it again this year, but I do think it's important to get it in there and get it on Governor Cox's radar at least or his staff's radar to con that this is something we want to continue. And national organizations all around the country do this on March 18th. There's a lot of attention paid to it. So that's great. 
yeah, so hopefully people have had a chance to read through that. I, I know I did, and I thought it was very well written. And um, any, any other comments or feedback from commissioners about the declaration? Okay, just smiles from those of you who are showing video. I have one uh, question and that is just, do we want to just include language, just brief language that appeals, you know, constitute, you know, critical stages of proceedings, especially since, you know, with the new indigent office of defense and Deborah handling the appeals and our hope, I think of expanding that at some point into uh, maybe even second class counties, first class counties as well, or whatever it ends up being, but it, especially juvenile at some point. So I, I wondered if we wanted to include specific appellate language as well. That's a great question. Especially as it relates to juvenile child welfare. I think it's a great idea because it, this is sort of, this was the canary in the mine that told us that we were having trouble at the trial level when we started looking at appeals 10 years ago and saw that there were so few because they were basically, there was nobody handling them. They weren't taking appeals. So I think that's a very good point, Margaret. So uh, if commissioners would like to see that language added, would Katrina just write more, add that in there? Yes, we'll add a paragraph on appeals. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, Margaret. Ah, thank you. Let's see, it looks like Rich Morrow had to go to another meeting and he likes the discussion. Um, any other comment? So we would just um, uh, give your the staff direction to go ahead and do that, right? No motion needed for this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks wonderful and I'm glad to know about it. And I imagine that this, the sooner you get to, to send it in, the better probably for the new administration. Yes. Right. Yeah job with the language. I, I, I thought it was very well done. Yeah, I did too. It's, it's very well written. That very is all good. Katrina. What do you say, Joanna? That is all Katrina. Yeah, no. She... Oh, no, this was a definitely a, a collaboration by many people, so. It is led by Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very good. Katrina, thank you so much. If you have your direction and, and add that and Margaret says she'd be happy to take another look at it. Um, I think it's exciting to have this go to the new administration. Everyone will be required to come in um, indigent defense costumes to the March 18th meeting. So just be ready from the waist up to be in costume. Uh, Clarence Earl Gideon is an option. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Michael, you might want to play that. You know, whatever you can come up with, it will be a themed meeting. <laughs> as long as oh, to come is the right to bear arms. <laughs> We're just a hop, skip, and a jump past that one. <laughs> we had someone at law school actually that uh, had a fabulous bare arm costume. And we would appreciate all of your ideas for how we can promote the declaration if it is approved by the governor's office and if we can do any kind of a virtual, I don't know, event or something to celebrate the Public Defense Day, um, in addition to the meeting. So uh, keep that well, in I mind. Would, I would say if you write up a press release and share it out to commissioners, perhaps we can uh, share those with our jurisdictions, um, cities and counties where you live. I, my idea. Yeah, good thing. Or if you know any contacts in the, in the media. Yeah, no, I think it's very, it could, there could be some interest generated there, awareness. Good. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I think I was just looking to see if there's anything in the chat, but I don't think so. Now there was this last paper in the materials. I don't know what this is. Uh, it says missing and some names. Is that, are you doing anything with that? It's, it's, yeah. I think that's the vote total, but I, I do believe we need to make a motion to on the proposed um, awards or the non-lapsing funds. I don't know if we ever actually officially voted to approve 
those requests. Oh, very good. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, the motion that we did make, I guess it didn't cover all those others, huh? Well, we've lost our quorum. I think we did make, my recollection is that you did make, what are you asking for specifically, Margaret? Well, you, well, I just didn't know if the broad motion that we made on, you know, Wasatch count that the general request for the authorizations to amend and to include Wasatch County included approval for the request, the requests for the uh, one time non lapsing funds, 660,000 that is detailed. If it did, great. That was the intent. Then awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, thanks for asking. Okay, so then this other paper that has these names, it's not something we need to cover. Yeah, no, that that's the uh, vote chart. Sorry about that. I lost you, Greg. Can anyone else hear Greg? It's just it's just the vote tally for how they keep track of things. It, it's not your material, it's ours. Oh, okay. So you just need one tiny motion. I would like to point out we are nearly under an hour meeting. Right? <laughs> No, it's impressive. We went through it and still were thorough, I feel like. Good, good items on the agenda. So we have the um, meeting date. So it looks like, do we not meet in February? No meeting in February. All right. Take a that little look. Said, I will be in constant communication. We'll find out the governor's budget next week officially. Um, and then we head right into appropriations committee hearing. So yeah, I will send out committee members' yeah. names, and if you know them, please reach out. We are not, you know, like popularity item number one on executive offices and criminal justice, so we always need additional help and additional spokespeople and messaging. So um, I don't know how we'll all do that this year, but we'll find a way. Well, I think that that touches on the question. Sorry, Margaret. Uh, so do we know who are the new legislators for the EOCJ then? Do you mustn't do you know who they are? I do, yeah. We have two new chairs. So Representative Hall is our House chair. And then Senator um, Owen, is it Owens? Yeah, Darren Owens. He, um, Owens used to be in the House. He replaced Senator Okerlund. And Senator Okerlund was very, he sponsored the appellate bill. And he is over many of the counties that we work with, San, San Pete, Utah, um, a lot of the middle Utah um, counties. So we have a meeting with both of them next week, Adam, Senator Weiler and I, Senator or Representative Ferry, if you're still on, I was gonna reach out to you about that also. Um, Senator, Representative Ferry is still on our appropriations committee. He is not, no longer the vice chair as he was. Um, sorry, I'm trying to open it up. So I make sure I, they haven't updated the full list online most of them that it's still old yeah still the same um rep i know representative pitcher who's a prosecutor up in davis county is now on our appropriation committee mm. so she works with you um and then trying to think sean if there's anyone connected to either of your worlds on there i, I continue to i consider you living in two worlds now sean yeah um, i think bramble is still on there margaret um, he's always been not an open supporter, but a tacit supporter, <laughs> as Bramble is. Um, and then, yeah, and is Bramble, Bramble's Orem too, right, Heather? Yeah. Um, it's hard to hey, know. Hey, Joanna. Large yeah. part of Bramble as well. Yes, Representative Ferry, do you know the full list? Hey, uh, well, I could pull it up really quick, but I was just going to say, what, what day and what time, or maybe shoot me an email. Uh, because I would, I would love to be on that, um, in that meeting so that we, you know, I can help out there as well. Consider yourself invited next Wednesday at 930. <laughs> okay, I'll see if it fits my schedule. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing to be on that committee. So I'm going to, I've got, uh, let's see here. I'll pull up, do you want me to pull up a list really quick? I'll I'll pause not if, or I'll mute, mute myself and I can tell you everybody else. Not off. if you're still driving and towing heavy farm equipment, no. <laughs> I, I'm on the farm now. Okay. So not, I just got, 
Um, I just got here, so no more no more towing heavy equipment for a few minutes. If you can pull that list up, that would be great. I'm having trouble finding it in my emails. I know okay. it's somewhere. Give me give me one second. I'll have it here. Yeah. While you're doing that, were you going to say something, Margaret? Did we? Oh, I was <laughs> just had forgotten to mention before. If there's any help that I can give with Chief Ross as far as <laughs> understanding the child welfare portion of what we, what we do, I'm sure Adam you know, and others are more than capable of doing that, but I'm also more than willing to help out in any way as possible, because I do know that is a world that's somewhat probably still foreign to most uh, police departments. You know who I would reach out to, Margaret, is I would reach out to Commissioner Kamalu and introduce her to what you do fully and the scope of your work, because I think, um, with Davis County, you had expressed early on an interest in knowing more about juvenile, the juvenile side of things. And I realized that I'd forgotten to follow up on it. And I asked Pam to reach out on the delinquency side and then maybe Margaret too on the child welfare side, because I do think it, they are sort of under attended to in many areas of the importance of those two roles. And it is hard to understand. I knew nothing about child welfare defense before I started this job. Thankfully, others did. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that, Commissioner and Margaret, Pam. If you, if we can find time for all of us, I'd love to do that. So, I would like that also. Yes. Anytime, happy to do that. Good. Let's see. Hey, Let's Joanne, Harry, are you ready? Yes, I've got the list here. And so, Chairman, on, on that, I'll give you the House members. I don't have the the Senate list, but from the House, we've got. Craig Hall is the chairman, Cheryl Acton is the vice chair, uh, Kira Berkland, who is in Morgan County and um, part, part of going up into uh, Summit County. Um, Jeff Burton, he is down in Utah County. Um, he is a uh, retired general, Jeff Burton. Um, Representative Dunnigan, he was, he's returning to the committee myself. Um, Matt Gwynn, he's taking over He's a, um, a police officer on the Roy Police Department. He's from far west, which is West Weaver County, taking Lee Perry's seat. Um, a representative Carol Moss, Carol Speckman Moss from Salt Lake County, Stephanie Pitcher and Angela Romero. So Angela's returning as well. So that's the House roster. I'm not sure um, in the Senate, I don't have that list, but um, it'll be a good group of, of individuals and I think they'll be generally supported there's um you know four four or five members that are new that will need to work with to help them understand the importance of what we're trying to accomplish but uh i think that i think it will be good great that's helpful thank you okay let's see so yes the next meeting then will be the march 18th the which will be Utah National Public Defense Day. So that's great. And is there any other question or item that uh, someone has that didn't get brought up before? No, nope, looks like everyone's pretty good. Well, okay. This has been a great meeting. Got a lot done and, and did so efficiently. Thank you so much, everyone, commissioners and staff for all of your work and your, um, your dedication to this very important group. And uh, I will take a motion to adjourn if somebody's ready to do that. To adjourn. All right, Margaret and a second from? Michael. Michael, all right. Thank you all. Good to see you, happy new year. Thank you, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>